Welcome to the Chatting with Dr. Steve show. I am your host, Dr. Steve. Today's guest is a cosplayer, collector, host of a YouTube channel called This Just In, and currently waiting to get back to work working on costumes worn by your favorite superheroes and villains in the CW world. Welcome, Justin Monk. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, how's life over there in Vancouver? Vancouver's great. Uh, obviously, it's very, very temperate. It's very beautiful this time of year. Um, so if there's ever a time to be off, it's the nice sunny days, although the rain as well. The rain. Vancouver, Vancouver's great. It's been pretty calm, and uh, for the most part, uh, uh, it's been it's been handling the whole crisis pretty good so far. Yep, yep. And you you work in um you work for a company that works for um CW shows creating costumes, correct? Yeah, so uh, CW is is a client of the company I work for, Ocean Drive Leather, and we we do work for lots of different film productions. Uh, we've done stuff for Snowpiercer and um, you know Lemmy Snicket and Supernatural, and so it's not really limited to just superheroes, but um, it's pretty exciting for what we've the large variety of shows for sure. Now, now because production shut down, how, how has that affected you and the company? Is the company closed down or are you still producing product? No. So we, um, like a lot of the contractors that do a, predominantly a lot of film work, we did take a voluntarily step back and um, we all kind of went into the voluntary or uh, layoff situation just because that is our meat and potatoes work. Typically, uh, we work a good nine months, 10 months of the year on film and television. And then the last couple months uh, to fill that up of the year, we work on customer jackets. The company does do a lot of uh, consumer consumer work where you can, you know, you, you call in, you write in, you get a customized leather jacket. That's one of their big businesses. Um, uh, not necessarily replica work or anything like that, just like a, they do a lot of custom styled leather jackets so that's usually what we do in the off off season uh but this year just because of what's happened so far uh, as of the end of march we shut down and we're hoping to start back up hopefully next month next month um hopefully um is, is that when the, the productions are starting up i mean because they got to get people to come in from the uh, state and we don't we don't really know it's it's kind of all up in the air based on every factor you can imagine watching the news i mean with the way a lot of our shows and movies and everything is uh united states american based uh productions so it's all really affected on how all that works but so we don't know there's a lot of rumors um but it's just rumors we have we don't have any set dates for anything okay karen says hello Remember hello karen? last time we met so do you prefer vancouver or toronto you know to be honest like I, I grew up in ontario i you know i was there for 30 plus years and i've been in vancouver now for almost four and i do prefer vancouver as far as just, just the overall atmosphere of, of, of the city and the province. Uh, I love Toronto. I have a lot of dear friends there. Uh, like I said, it's a lot of my past and history. I lived in Toronto for a time as a, as a kid. Um, but there's just something about out here that just seems a lot more, um, I don't know, like peaceful in a way, despite being a big city center. Yeah. Yeah. You've also don't, uh, your winters are really uh, envious for sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There was a number of times where I had family members or friends like, oh, look at all this snow that just showed up. And I was like, I'm outside of my t-shirt in the sun. <laughs> yeah, uh, I got a buddy of mine from UK. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. <laughs> That's all he says. Hello. So, you know, hi, Jamie. Yeah, this, this my jacket doesn't look as cool as yours. I picked this one at the uh, <laughs> universe, actually Warner Brothers studio up in um, Hollywood. But it's just kind of like, um, it's, it's a nice material, but your jacket, let's see it. Oh, it's... <laughs> Arrow <laughs> jacket. Yes. Did, did you um, make that yourself or did you order it? No, I, I, had, I had some help make it. It's, it's one of those uh, things about also wanting to costume as well as make. <laughs> Plus, you just get to see things a little bit better. Oh, for sure. Now, when, <laughs> when I first met you, um, you were doing a podcast you're doing a youtube show called um this just in right yep. where you collected stuff you made things and costumes and you duplicated it tell us a bit about that yeah I, i've had a passion for props and costumes since i was old enough to have them 
So right from like a young age, uh, I just recently put up a video talking about my proton pack work. But when I was a kid, and I mentioned this in the video, but I used to take backpacks and tape on yarn and take a rolling pin of my mom's and crayon all over it with the switches and stuff and be a ghostbuster. I, I used to take, I took a pillowcase once and shredded it up and cut it up so I could have a Jedi costume. <laughs> so I, I was making things since I was a kid. And as you get older, obviously you get more um, knowledge about certain things. And like I, I made a tricorder once out of wood with, uh, I was part of the big brothers, uh, you know, big sisters organization where I was a little brother. And so I got to learn how to attach hinges. So I've just always been into making and remaking and, and replicating props and costumes. And then of course, when I went away to college, I started getting more skilled in design. Um, I started just being more detail oriented and eventually came to the point where I really always liked sharing on forums. And at the time forums was the way to share uh, that I eventually decided to do a YouTube channel. So I can actually show some of the things, show some of the detail when I make something and go through all the minutia and why I did that and, and what the story is behind it. Because a lot of times it's not like I just say, oh, I like this prop from this movie. I want to replicate it. Sometimes it's got to mean something, you know, it's something to me personally that I want to show or I want to have, I want to hold in my hands and right. try and get it as accurately as possible. So... <laughs> Showing it, showing it off that way through getting into YouTube has just been uh, a, a blessing because I get to kind of also have a record of the item, you know. So yeah, I, I've I've been in I've been making the, everything since I was a kid. Never thought I would be in Vancouver making anything for real, mind you. Uh, before we get into that, uh, Karen is loving the arrow suit in the background. <laughs> I thought she would. It's one is of my that, favorite. Uh, is is that your suit? Yeah, um, yeah, that's my suit. Yeah. So, so you're the arrow. You're, oh, you're... always. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's adorable. When I saw you and um your daughter pictures of you guys at cons, you would dress up as arrow, and she would dress up as um Arsene. Speedy. 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 Yeah, yeah. That she uh, she loves me, Speedy. So I like when she's my little sidekick. She's she grows out of the outfits too quick, though. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Uh, Jay Crawford, he's up in um, Deep River. He says, any movie or show would be a dream to, uh, wait, any movie or show be a dream Which show movie? movie to work on. Okay. This is interesting because after working, like, okay, so I was big into Arrow when it first came out, and then I never thought that I'd actually work on anything for the show. And what does happen is you do kind of get to the point where you kind of have a, a shattered expectation you know like you're like oh so this is what it's like or something so it's like my favorite show in the whole world is doctor who i love doctor you can see my whoop sign over there from my, my <laughs> artist and i love doctor who but would i ever want to work on it i don't know right because then you then all of a sudden it would become the gloss the gloss would remove a little bit if that makes sense and um but but on the other side, you get to see things, you get to meet people, uh, you get to meet, and not just like, oh, I get to meet an actor. Like you get to meet like the craftspeople who make some of the most iconic things that you never think of. Uh, through working at Ocean Drive and uh, with Arrow and Flash and everything, I got, I've got to meet uh, some of the creative directors and art designers, uh, prop makers, and they're so fantastic to talk to. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you look at some of that stuff, definitely would love to work on on um, some other sci-fi sci specifically like a sci-fi show would be really great like um uh, like something like a star trek or a star wars totally totally would be a dream to do something for star wars definitely uh yeah you said um but the, the first show that you worked on um in, in the cw universe was it arrow supergirl um uh it was kind of mixed because the way ocean drive works it's not like uh we work for arrow and then we work for whatever it's right. they come to us for like a piece or a costume, right? So uh, I think the first thing I worked on was something for Supergirl, which was uh, Miss Martian, uh, was the first, I think, real thing, and then Guardian. Um, but then in, in the interim, I mean, there were things to work on, like fixing Green Arrow's pants or- uh, While he's wearing them, or? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, uh, the cool thing about Ocean Drive is we don't just make the costumes, we repair them. So if a stunt man typically, uh, say, rips the pants or they, 
they blow up the stump man and there's a tear and it comes back and then we repair it. So that's the, that is a cool thing is we're always getting those cautions in. Uh, we see the flash caution quite often for repairs or for fixes or tweaks because that's also the other thing too is actors like pe being people, they fluctuate a lot and you always want to make sure they look the best in their costumes. So yeah, it's never like working on Arrow that I'm working on this. It's kind of like in a day I could work on something from Flash, Supergirl, uh, Arrow, Supernatural, but you never know. Well, when you first out the, uh, moved out there, I was following you, and I think the first thing that you got excited about was, um, oh my God, you, you posted it. I got to work on or fix Supergirl's cape. <laughs> yeah, that was surreal because it was just like, oh my God, here's this cape. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Supergirl's cape. Here it is. I was just like, whoa, that was it. I it was excited. I had the same excitement. I didn't post about it, but I had to. There was the. Um, if you follow Supergirl, there was a fight with Superman and Zod in, in a kind of a mental state issue. And they got the capes waterlogged and they brought them for us to fix up. And I got Superman's cape right there. <laughs> oh, nice. Did you, did you actually put it around and run around the room? Of course I did. <laughs> How could you not? <laughs> right? Go get some video. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> That's adorable. Um, before we get into that, Karen says, does your daughter create costumes with you? She does, actually. More and more uh, lately. Where Before, it's not like I, I've never taken my daughter and said, okay, you're going to make this costume. She was always very open to, oh, I like this costume. She wanted to do Speedy initially because she wanted to match me. And Supergirl was all her own, which I did Superman with her and Smallville Superman. But now she's got her own loves and 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 and, and things that she really likes. So she has a huge, huge list of costumes to make. She's really into anime right now, so she's got a number of those. Uh, and of course, um, she's grown up quite a bit from her last Mandalorian costume, so she wants to make a new one. So we work on that. Wow. Uh, to, to go with my my completed one finally so yeah it's it's uh it's a really great outlet for the two of us to to create and learn new techniques and painting and sanding and gluing and her halloween costume last year was an anime character and her and i spent a lot of time working on getting all the details correct along wow. with my and she helped a lot as well now, um, the, the thing about Vancouver and Toronto, I know Vancouver's nicer and I, I like, I'd rather live there, but Toronto, when you were here, I mean, we had a comic con or so oh, yeah. every other weekend, Yeah, something happened. So know. now over there, you get like once a year, maybe? Well, okay, we do get Seattle. So okay. Emerald City Comic Con and you get, and then a couple little ones around there and you, yeah, you get a major fan expo here. Not a lot of little cons. They do have a couple anime cons that are really small. Like I'm talking like, like a couple thousand people small and it's great but it's it is very different for conventions for sure it's a little sad yeah I, f I figured you'd miss that i do i do although it is nice to go to like emerald city comic-con and i've gone to wonder con which is in uh you know uh san diego so like because they're, they're all on the same coast so there's no time differences but it does cost more to go you know it'd be like going to a dragon con or you know any of the big east ones new york comic con new york city comic con did you ever go to san diego i uh, yeah I, I went i went to san diego as, uh once or twice and uh but i went as a as a booth babe as i like to say for ud replicas uh ud replicas is a, is a fantastic company that uh, i've worked i worked with a lot and did, did some little bit of modeling for uh, for a Superman, um, so he had me come down and help him at his booth, and it was it was fantastic. I loved being there as a vendor. I seeing how how hard it was to get to the bathroom <laughs> was made me go. I don't know if I'd ever want to be here as a fan, but WonderCon was was amazing, and I would always highly recommend that one. Where is that located? That's just that's in um, that's in Anaheim, I think technically. So it's 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 where they shot Picard's um, Starfleet. In the new series. Oh, cool. Uh, which part? The outside or? Oh, the outside, yeah. I mean, maybe they did some of these. I'm not sure. But it's a beautiful convention. Uh, it's more like a costume, costumer's convention. So I always enjoy it. I wore I wore this 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 guy I wore there a couple of times. It was a lot of fun. Still fits? Oh yeah. Well, because COVID, uh, with this COVID thing happening and me staying at home, I kind of like, you know, got bigger, but not uh, in the buff oh, way, but, you know, below the waist. It's kind of like um, my stomach hits the door before I do. 
Yeah, cool. Well, you know, I'm trying. I'm trying to trying to work work out a little bit more now while we're getting closer to a work date, so that I can be a little more uh, fit. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, do you know um any rumors about uh, whether the Superman series will actually be happening? Oh no, it's, they... it's happening. A hundred percent. It was ordered full series. Uh, before the break, um, before the the COVID shutdown, uh, they were getting gearing up for doing their pilot. Uh, in which case we were supposed to help work on the, all the leather accessories, but that all got uh, shoved to the side. But as far as everything showed, like uh, the CW has been advertising Superman and Lois. So 100% it's supposed to be happening. Hopefully it happens really well. Hopefully you get to work a lot on it because that is my favorite superhero. Hence, you know, and uh, so I would really love to be able to work, have that in my CV. Hey, doctor. Hi, Justin. It's Chris Borges. Not sure if you remember him. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, look, uh, he looks official in the Star Trek outfit. Yes, yes. Uh, Paul Neal, any dream cosplay you want to do? And hello as well. Hey, Paul. Actually, I have a, a very... The cool thing about working at Ocean Drive is I got a, a better working with leather. And I my leather qualities, even in the first six months, was skyrocketing. So now I'm looking at some costumes. I'm like, oh. So one of the ones on my list is The Witcher. And there's a lot I've learned since working at Ocean Drive that I look at that costume going, oh, I know, I know how to do this. And so that's that's my next big dream costume, that one, along with a Superman costume. But that involved also slimming down a little bit with a muscle suit. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is doing well. Thank you. Uh, yeah, muscle suit. I definitely need that. You know, now I wear my Captain America shirt, you know, that one that you picked up that's got like the abs and stuff. Well, I got abs still, but it's just now like more closer to you. Well, you know, the, the abs, everyone has abs, you know, sometimes they're just a little more padded. It's... Well, yeah, my mind's protected really well. Don't <laughs> want those things to get ruined, man, or destroyed, damaged. No can do. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay. And um, what about Green Arrow and the Grannies? I mean, the Canary. canary. Uh, yeah. yeah, we've heard nothing. We know okay. sometimes, uh, and I and I get a, I get friends and people always ask me like, oh, did you have some sort of inside information? Oftentimes, I find something out on the internet and then I message, <laughs> somebody, you know, hey, is this is this what's happening? I message my bosses and they don't know, or or I do uh, have a great relationship with some of the uh, heads of departments, and I'll say, hey, do you know anything about this? And they're like, no, I haven't heard. <laughs> or oh yeah, we saw that on CBR.com this morning. <laughs> So oftentimes we're in the same position. We're we're waiting to hear. Uh, usually when we get pulled into finding out any information is when there's casting or costumes. Currently, Green Arrow and the Canaries, if they do a, which they did kind of a backdoor pilot, if they do a secondary pilot or production, they already have everything. So we'll get a call saying, hey, we need some stuff touched up or stretched out or taken in or, uh, you know, built a little differently. So we haven't heard anything. And right now with this hiatus, um, Unplanned hiatus. I don't. I don't know if uh, we're hearing hear anything for a little while. So wow. I mean, apparently yeah. a lot of people liked it, and the ladies are all amazing. Uh, you know, we worked with all of them. All those, all the costumes that they wore. I'm pretty sure were all ours. So would love to see it continue. <laughs> well, no doubt. It's also good for you <laughs> financially. <laughs> but but as a as as a fan, yeah. I mean, like the the the, the two canaries are. Uh, you know, great ladies. Uh, Juliana is a, is a complete sweetheart. And that was one of my, Juliana's costume was one of the first costumes I did laser textures for, which is what my predominant job at Ocean Drive is. Laser? Laser, yes. Lots of lasering. That's what I do. And so that I was like, a bit more about it. Yeah. Um, typically, when people think of textures on a superhero costume, they think of, uh, for instance, uh, Batman v Superman, Batman and Superman. Uh, so they have that raised texture. Shazam has it. Dare, uh, Deadpool has it. They, uh, Daredevil has it. Uh, they all have it. Captain America. It's a very staple item. But what that is, it's it's a high density silk screen that's put on fabric, and it's 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 great. It's absolutely fine. The new Star Trek uh, Picard uniforms have it as well. It's it's very very common. Laser though, rather than putting a you know silk screen on top, it cuts in. And what's great about that is you can cut into leather, you can cut into neoprene, you can cut into several different materials and still create a texture that is also customized specifically. And one thing I like about it is if anyone's familiar with film is typically 
there's not just like one Grenier costume, there's like eight, right? And when you have a costume that has a texture on it, if you get it as a sheet, you just cut out your texture, put it on. With lasering, you laser the texture to the panel and it's always in the exact same spot. So if there's a special detail or special texture, or the direction, anything like that, it's always the same. So All right. it's a pretty neat process. Karen asks, is laser etching the method you used on the flash costume? The current flash costume has everything. It's got silk screen, it's got laser etching, it's got uh, 3D materials, it's got uh, specially special coated industrial texture on it as well for sliding on the road. So it's got everything. <laughs> Another one that has just about everything is the, um, the green arrow from the Green Arrow Canaries. Um, a cat's costume has pretty much everything on it as well. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I've, like as as a fan, I kind of always watch. It's like, okay, they got a crisis happening in about half an hour. Everything's gonna blow up, and there are the costumes just on the mannequins. Like, um, yeah, you know what? You gotta get that leather on. You gotta get across town. Um, yeah, it's when good luck, guys. I always laughed as a fan before I even worked out out here. Not that it would have made a difference, but uh, Green Arrow used to grab his bow and take it off off the stand and say, "Suit up." And I'm like, but he's got to put the bow back down. Yeah. Oh, gosh, put well, up his boots, put his eye makeup on, put the mask on, throw the hood up, then <laughs> put the bow. <laughs> yeah. So I always thought that was funny. The Flash is the only one who gets thought, with it. You know, he just... <laughs> yeah, him and Supergirl. That's exactly. Cool. And that's they did They did point that out a little bit with... Um, they had that promo a couple years ago in the locker room. If yeah, you saw that one and uh, Supergirl and Flash got ready right away, but then you know they're like, "Hey, some of us can't." <laughs> yeah, Black Lightning. Hey, I'll leave the new guy. Yeah, don't forget the new guy. Yeah, I was so happy when they included him in the previous crisis. Didn't get to oh, meet so him. Didn't get to work on anything for him, but it was really cool. <laughs> it was included. Now during the crisis, uh, was that like extra hours you guys had to put in? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we or just the crew. We're, we're contract work, right? So all of our stuff is usually done beforehand, right? So we're like we're like the first stop. We do our work, we get the actors in, and then it goes to set. And then regard if there's any repair work, then it comes back to us and we work on it. But then it, you know, it, it, during production. But typically we're like the first stop as far as that's concerned. So we do work late hours, and we do. Uh, but our my bosses are fantastic, and we don't really have to work like sixteen hour days. Typically, sometimes the sewers, they work many more hours sometimes than I do, uh, depending on the costume. But, uh, but yeah, like we didn't really have to worry about that part of things for working late. But we did a lot of costumes for, for Crisis, a lot of unique, iconic costumes. Um, okay, yeah, Chris Borges says um, Batman has one advantage, though. Alfred dresses him. <laughs> That's a hell of a visual. Thank you, Chris. I didn't, yeah, you know what? Well, considering what was it, Ben Affleck said it takes 10 people to get him in costume. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but Adam West, he just like slid down a pole and boom. Exactly. Nailed it. it pro Adam West probably got in his costume pretty quick. I think he didn't have to worry about any undersuits or. Because uh, <laughs> it's like, pure West. Bodies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably he's probably a, the, that whole before all this because even now the the guys they have to put on muscle suits or padding and then some of the costumes do take a little bit of wiggling to get in um i mean stevens stevens uh he wanted me to put his on uh, all himself so it's got zippers and stuff but you still kind of need a hand to throw the quiver on and you know make sure everything's up right so it's you always need you always need a butler to help Oh, for sure. Um, we're going to go a bit off topic. Karen asks, are you still involved with the 501st? And what character are you? When I was involved in the 501st, I was Anakin Skywalker, um, Revenge of the Sith. Uh, but I took a step back a number of years ago. I had a, had a few things come up that kind of pulled me away from it. Uh, lately, I've been working on my Mandalorian costume and joining the Mandalorian Mercs, which is basically like the 501st, but it's Mandalorians, Boba Fett's. <laughs> So obviously you liked the you enjoyed the show that came out. Oh yeah, yeah, that's done, and the <laughs> technology behind making that is fantastic. I can see that being the future, really, of many productions. Like yeah, it was really really fantastic. Yeah, I heard about it. It's like a, a um, round room green screen, so it's like um, you don't have to worry about so so all, all the reflections, you know, like from 
the screen just like gets put on the costume right away instead of like CGing it. Yeah, re rear screen projection has been used since film started, and it was it was it, it worked well for when they needed it to. But then after a while, it became much more of a hassle. Now they found a way that they can make a three D space, and it was really neat because they show that where the camera points is the perspective you get of the place. So if they're looking at you here, back here might not have anything on the screen unless they need it there. So it's, it's yeah, it's uh, apparently Kenobi is going to be done the same way. And I can start, I can see that once the technology becomes a little bit more mainstream that we might see that in a lot of films where they can pretty much do all their sets indoors without worrying about necessarily blocking off a street or, you know, people seeing surprises, right? Because oftentimes, especially in our shows, is that you're going to see it. There will be people out there that will see it. So they got to get a promo image out or people get a spy picture and spoil the surprise, right? Yeah, we've, we've had that when your actors were out there. Um, I, I guess there's some outside shots they all had to do. And like people with cameras just like posting all these pictures, like uh, of everyone in costume. And, if they, and that's and if, where we saw John yeah. Wesley's ship. Yes. Yeah. And that one, we, that's, uh, Stephen got ahead of that one to make sure that it got, because he was outside on the street. And that was a big secret. That was a hard one to keep, keep under wraps for myself. Cause I, I worked very closely with that one. Yeah. You, there's a picture of you and your crew with, uh, Steve, with, um, John Wesley's ship inside of his flash costume. Yeah. Now, did you, how did you create that costume? It's not the same way it was done back no. in the nineties, was it? It was it was pretty amazing. Um, when we first started talking about the costume, they the producers weren't one hundred percent sure which way they wanted to go with it, but they were definitely eventually steered towards trying to keep it as authentic to the original as possible. So that was that was amazing. Um, so amazing to the point where they sent the original costume to us to look at. So I actually was able to take a look at the original costume that I looked at when I was nine years old on TV and go through it. And kind of break down what they did so we were able to color match the flocking because uh so the original suit was like a spandex suit that then had muscles that were latexed onto it and then they flocked it you know like flocking like on a dashboard or on like old action figures to get that like fuzzy fuzzy feeling and they flocked it because they because at the time comics didn't have seams and what was fortuitous was the year before i started working at ocean drive i talked to the original designer of that suit and we had a couple hour talk at San Diego Comic-Con about how, what he thought of it. And uh, fantastic, fantastic gentleman. And I learned a lot. And then when we got the suit in, it kind of just made that whole meeting that much more serendipitous, right? And uh, we were able to decide to flock. And we recreated all the 3D objects. Because um, so, it was, unfortunately, the suit had taken quite the uh, age to it. And we were able to replicate everything as well as we could, updating the materials. So we were able to use our new stretch materials that is very common across the board for superheroes, um, much more breathable. And the muscles were inside the suit, but then um, took a few steps to make it a little bit more comfortable for John. He had mentioned uh, his original suit, he took off the gloves at the end of a shoot and was able just to pour out sweat out of his gloves oh. and he did say that our suit was was not that way at all so it was a little was more comfortable but technology i mean you're, you're talking like what 30 years of difference between when it came out you know and and what we've changed but we, we took a few steps to try and get it as accurate as possible while being more comfortable and um easier for john to, to get in and out and, and stuff like that but it was a dream project because not only did um, we get to do this and he was very thankful too um, that I asked special permission to get a selfie with him or a picture with him. First, I just wanted a selfie, but then they took a, took a picture. So then I have a picture with me and John Wesley ship as the flash and I'm wearing my flash t-shirt. <laughs> well, that's cool. It is. Yeah. I've also noticed that uh, on your page, you've got a picture with uh, Stephen Amell, you and your daughter. Mm -hmm. So apparently um, during Christmas, he come instead of Santa Claus, they bring in Steve Amell? No, they do both. They do? Okay. <laughs> uh, Stephen loves Santa Claus. Yeah, so my uh, my ex-wife, she works on it, worked on Arrow. And so the Christmas parties a couple of years, I got to go. And uh, the one year my daughter wanted to wear her Speedy costume. <laughs> and so he's in. he was in this outfit here and uh, did a picture with Santa Claus and then did a picture with, uh, with Stephen, which was great. He's very giving. Uh, uh, how did he react to her? Because like, she oh, looked so he, adorable in the picture. Yeah, it was, it was cute because he was uh, 
his daughter Mavi was there and he went to go grab a Christmas cookie and he turned around and saw Zaffin and uh, choked a little bit on his cookie. <laughs> and he thought it was great. She And she got a picture of him just by herself too. Oh, sweet. <laughs> so yeah, it was really sweet. Any other, um, the actors do that or just Steve? Uh, he's the only one that really did it. I mean, it, obviously it, it's great because he can wear his costume and it's kind of iconic. And the pictures that they took were usually in the uh, Queen loft apartment. So it was just this nice way of, he was already there. I mean, you're, it's on set, right? Like, so they're okay. there and it's really neat that he does that. Um, I mean, technically they all could do it, but it's kind of like, for me, it, it's one of those things that I, I always find is a little extra special for the ones that do it. Like when my daughter met the Green Ranger, he was in costume. So, you know, but not all the other ones she met. So it's, uh, I think it's, a, I think it's a neat way when they do that. Cause it makes it that much more, Oh, it's not a picture with Steve and Amal. That's a picture with the green arrow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're right. They all can do it, but it is work right for them. Right. I mean, they're not real superheroes. It is work. They got to put on the costume and then I'm sure they want to get out of it too. Like, you know, at the well, end yeah, of the you're going on too. Right. So, you know, <laughs> so, yeah. Right. so yeah, it was very giving of Steven to do that. I think he did it every year too. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's pretty freaking cool. Oh, to be working on Arrow. <laughs> well, it's all now done. We, right now. <laughs> I don't know. Well, maybe we can get Kat to do it every year. She can, like, carry on the tradition. Well, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, there's a lot of shows now, too. So it's it's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting what the what the superhero, DC superhero genre has now with Stargirl that just, just, just came out. Yeah. And Legends being renewed again. And... Uh, and then you have Titans and, uh, you know, all our shows here, Superman coming out. Like, who thought there'd be another Superman show ever? Well, if you ever came back here, which I doubt you will, I mean, you could probably get a chance to work on The Boys or Titans. Oh, possibly. I've met the uh, designer for those, uh, for, for a program that came up here to, to do. So that was, that was fun to talk to them about, too. <laughs> nice. So, yeah. You, you work I got to talk to the people, so... Yeah, but still, have you already got a resume right there? So um, that's pretty cool. Yep. That's um, true. Paul Neal, any work on the TARDIS console? No. <laughs> that was the last office. time you worked. Uh, before I moved out here. So what happened is I was working away on that TARDIS, and there was no way to bring it to Vancouver. None. And so I was able to sell it to the local Doctor Who group, who is going to, uh, as far as I know, finish it and then have it at convention spaces. And then as soon as I have my own space here set up, which believe it or not is pretty close, I'm gonna be redoing it because I kept all my all my parts and bits and bobs. So the idea is still to do it. I still want to, I still want to turn this console. <laughs> is it gonna be bigger on the inside? Bottom. Sorry? It's gonna be bigger on the inside? No, it's the consoles. It is the inside. Inside, so, I don't know. Console. I'm not a Doctor Who fan. The only Doctor I know is the really cool one. Yeah, that does this a lot. Okay, the real freaking Doctor. Yeah, just saying. He needs a TARDIS. That Doctor. That's. I do. He does. Well, I got a swirly thing on the wall, right? True. So that that, okay. that that does a job. Except they got to remember to turn it on. Otherwise, it, you know, <laughs> boom. Just a big owl. Yeah, I mentioned that when I met um. Oh, geez. Uh, brain fart. Uh, Doc Brown from Back to the Future. Yeah, Christopher Lloyd. Actor. Yeah. yeah, Christopher Lloyd. Um, there's our, our buddy. Um, our buddy had the DeLorean. He got us in for some photo shoots. I was Dr. Evil. I met Christopher Lloyd, and I'm talking to him. I go, you know, my time machine is better than yours, right? And he just looked at me. I'm sure it is. <laughs> Smelled for the picture, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I, I didn't know, know what to say. say. I, would, I would dress as the tenth doctor for that. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> All right on. Um, now you've heard about um, Ruby Rose leaving Batwoman, yeah. and they're going to create a new character. So that means a possible new costume. You yeah. guys are going to be designing. That's, well, again, we don't design, so uh, all the okay. time. But uh, Maya Manny, the designer for Batwoman, um, as far as I know, she'll probably be designing it. Maybe taking some ideas to update it and then we'll get to making that once we get back for sure which is pretty exciting really now when i'm you when you when, okay sorry when the designer designs the costumes is that it is that the final um design <laughs> there's or do the actors have a say in it oh yeah there's there's always tweaks and changes right so sometimes what may uh feel right in, in a uh, piece of artwork uh doesn't work 
to be constructed that way. And then sometimes the actor wants a little more mobility. Uh, there's been a number of times where we've added things to a costume so they get more arm mobility or um, be able to do so, turn their head better or something like that. Uh, there's always been, there's always tweaks. And the actors are very uh, intrinsic to that. Because again, a drawing is a drawing and you can get away with a lot on a drawing. Uh, that's why you couple with someone who knows how to construct really well. And, and then of course the individual. Okay, Karen says, uh, Maya and Andy Poon are awesome. I don't know who these people are. Yeah, Ma Maya Manny is a is a creative uh, costume designer. And so she worked on Arrow from season one through seven. And she uh, also designed uh, the Flash costumes up to season four and a number of costumes therein. She's currently on Batwoman. And Andy Poon is uh, one of her uh, concept artists. So she'll come up with the idea and he'll flesh it out. So for instance, he did the Batman, her and him worked on the Batman costume for, for Batwoman. And then of course we, we actually made it. Well, you had to make it better, right? So it could fit a woman. <laughs> well, we made the Batman costume. <laughs> right. Uh, we didn't do Batman. Pure perfection. Yes, right? exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that, that, uh, a good partnership and it's really good. Oh, cool. Is it still there or did you just destroy it all just to make the Batwoman costume? Well, the idea is that they, they that Batwoman took her costume from Batman, but for real, it's still there. It was used on a mannequin in one of the episodes, like it was thrown thrown off the building. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, Chris Borges, do you still wear your Stargate gear at cons? Do you have time? Honestly, I haven't worn, worn mine in a while. So, no. Yeah, so I had. Um, uh, a little bit of a uh, crisis where I had to have some, I had some money issues while moving out here. And I had someone offer me uh, a good chunk of money for my entire collection. So I let that go. I don't really have anything more. I did get some, some new, new patches recently. Um, but uh, you no, know, unfortunately I don't have my Stargate gear really at all, which is unfortunate because my, uh, my girlfriend has been watching the entire series for the first time. And I'm like, I used to have that and that <laughs> um my friend dave says any actors ask for extra padding in the special area i'm, I'm assuming you mean to help build them up yeah you know we yeah, yeah. Have the big, biceps, big, right? bigger shoulders uh <laughs> we we never have to worry about the biggest thing about superhero costumes and anyone who's ever worn a superhero costume or has watched anything about the behind the scenes is that technically we try and make them look as Ken doll as possible. So, which, you know, they had to do with uh, Chris Reeves too. Right. And uh, so, yeah, that's, we try and keep it as minimalistic as possible. Doesn't mean people don't make comments. Reddit really loved Godspeed's costume and pointed out his cod in that. And we're calling him cod speed. <laughs> um, we we may try. not know about this, but. Like whose idea it was to give Batman nipples? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> we, we did joke about that. We we joked about adding nipples to the Batman costume. <laughs> we did talk about it. <laughs> that that could have been fun to see. <laughs> All right on. Um, anything that you're especially proud of yourself on some of the costumes that appeared on screen? Yeah, I mean. It's fun. Like everything's got a little bit of difference and some things I have a lot of pride, like the nineties flash, the redux of that was, uh, I'm really proud of that because of getting to work on something from a kid then meeting the actor. And I told him I was a big fan of his show, brought in my DVD collection. <laughs> <laughs> we talked, we had some stories to talk about that. Um, I'm really proud of how the crisis outfits turned out from the, uh, Right from Elseworlds, right? So the Monitor and Anti-Monitor and Harbinger and Pariah all were very, um, very close to how they should have looked from the comic. They look fantastic, yeah. yeah like, and I was able to help give a little bit of input here and there from my geeky side of things. So it's, it was really fun, and I'm very proud to see how well those came. And what's great about that is what most people don't realize is um, Maya Manny designed the Monitor for Elseworlds. But then Bree Thorpe, who took over for Arrow in season eight, designed Anti-Monitor and Harbinger. And then Kate Main, who designs for The Flash, designed Pariah. We all were, we worked on them all, 
but that's three different designers that had to create costumes that still kind of looked in the same universe and were all together. Um, and the, all three ladies are amazing designers. And getting to to work on those, is, I'm very proud of that. I'm, I'm, um, I'm also proud of Elongated Man. He was a, a great costume to work on. One of the first prop pieces I ever made was the thing on his chest before they recently replaced it. Um, but yeah, I, his original costume was that 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 little tiny thing. <laughs> a little bit, yes. But then when we got to do the purple one, which had been in development for a while, um, and then some of the things are just sentimental, like the black canary costume that uh, Juliana wore um, was special to me because that was the first one I got to put my texture, like a texture design that I worked on, um, onto it. So it's it's very special, right? So I'm very proud of that. Uh, the newest Green Arrow is special because I'm as a, as a Green Arrow fan all my life moving here and working on a costume, I didn't think they were ever going to give them a new one because the, the previous one is really, really well done. And um, But having the opportunity to work on the final one was was pretty amazing because it's like, I get to work on one. It's great. So, uh, and then of course, then there's ones that aren't superheroes. You know, I'm very proud of uh, the costumes we worked on Deadpool 2. Um, and, and some of those are just little things like prison guard outfits. We did a few things on those. Um, but I worked on some bracers for Lemony Snicket, <laughs> you know, and that was a kind of fun project because it was like, they came in, they ended up being laser cut in and then, you know, built in together. So it, it's, it's always a lot of fun, the collaboration between it. So a lot of times it's just kind of, I'm kind of proud seeing how well things end up looking on screen, you know, cause it's like, oh, I made this and it was last thing I did that day and it was really hot that day and you know it was uh you know trying to trying to get home for dinner <laughs> and three months later seeing it on TV it's like oh that looks so good <laughs> like the new flash right. cover, I'm, very, I'm very very excited because uh the ears on that were were a big collaboration to change that and I was really really happy about that uh, so, Karen asks, yes. you work on Spartan's jacket for season eight you worked on Spartan's jackets for seven. Uh, his his red and black one and his green and black one. The green and black one. Everyone's like you know, all excited because Green Lantern. I. <laughs> it's, uh, it was it was really fun to do that to kind of elude that direction. Plus it plus it made more sense too for Diggle to have green after he had been Green Arrow previously. So it, it made a lot of sense to be green to me personally. But yeah, it was a lot of fun to work on that costume. I didn't actually ever get to meet. Uh, didn't get to actually be there for the fittings, which was too bad for that one. But so I got to see him wear it up close, but it went really well. And I think it looked fantastic. I think all the outfits in season eight looked really good. I'm really proud of all of them. The, the, the final Black Mary, I thought, you know, she looked amazingly sexy in that. And that was all new, all new stuff. Yeah, I was, uh, I was joking with a friend of mine about, um, if the green arrow is going to continue in 2024 um, and they didn't go in through any time machine, it would kind of like be green arrow and the grannies is like black. <laughs> like, okay. I'll get you. You're chaser with a broom and whatnot, like beating up the bad guys. Oh, you know, just, yeah. You just, we just recast everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Cause who knows what will happen, right? Uh, whether we'll have a uh, film green arrow for all at this point, you know, We've only had two live action Green Arrows ever, so it's always room for more. That's right, uh, Justin Hartley. Hartley, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Um, I'm not sure if they tried to get him on the show, but he had other projects. Uh, yeah, I think know. they. I think they asked at one point, or at least it came up a couple times. But I'm not privy to any of that information. But I wish he was in it somewhere. Like oh, that would have been so cool. Uh, rival business trying to buy queen industries or something silly like that just as a bit cameo i would i would love that because I, I really loved how flash and supergirl both were very um the legacy word? actors yeah like they had pretty much everybody that they could get their hands on whether they were worried about it or not <laughs> like supergirl had like dean kane and kevin sorbo who was originally up for the role of superman in lois and clark and they had Terry Hatcher and they, you know, they had the original Supergirl, right? And the Flash did the same thing. So, I mean, they had Ezra on the Flash while in Crisis, which was just, you know, it's it's great that they, they responded to that. And the only live action Green Arrow 
other than Steven has been Justin Hartley. It was just too bad that they never were able to work something out. I would have loved that. My oh, interview yeah. would have loved that. Crisis would have been a great time. You could just had Justin come in and throw his old costume on. <laughs> yeah, but they did throw that costume in when uh, I, I, yep, I in think the Earth 90. Elseworld, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, and that was the original. Rumors say Charlie Hunan is interested in playing Green Arrow. Yeah, that's yeah, that's so that's many years of that. I'd be surprised if that happened just because of who's Charlie Hunan. Educate he me. Arthur in the latest King Arthur movie. Okay. So he's got and, the blonde uh, hair. Gotcha. And Karen says Mia's Green Arrow costume was really great. Yeah, it was very fun to work on that one. Uh, fun fact on the two hers and Stephen's last ones, if you if you notice, there's no quiver straps for either of them. So, <laughs> but Mia's was great. Mia's was great. Uh, I posted uh, about it on the Ocean Drive Facebook page, so you can see a close up. But hers was a lot of fun to work on, and Cat was so much fun to work with on that. She had, she wanted to make sure she could move in it very well, and has some really cool details in that costume we haven't done on anything else. Like she's got. Um, Custom knees, for instance, that were like uh, custom, custom design and sculpt, uh, sculpt design, model printed, cast in a rubber, wrapped in leather, and then put in her costume. They look really cool. And we haven't done that on a costume at all, at all since. So, with all the costumes that uh, your company produces, um, and the Arrow has, uh, anyone ever think of putting together a little museum? I I've been trying to do that at work. <laughs> We have a flash costume up on display, and I, would, I think it would be awesome just to have like a whole bunch of them. But from what I hear, though, uh, is Warner at the end of Arrow um, came and took all the the costumes, took everything and props. And I, my my personal assumption is that uh, last time I went through Warner Brothers, is they had the uh, BVS stuff up, so they had the uh, Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman stuff, and they had a whole bunch of actually Wonder Woman stuff up from the movie. So I'm hoping and thinking that they might actually be doing some sort of Arrow set costume display thing, because they took a lot of the set pieces too. All the set behind you there, they took that. So, oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, um, we were just at uh, Warner Brothers Studio last year, and they had um, they're they're focusing on Wonder Woman from the the movie and Aquaman. And of course, yeah. So, uh, my assumption is that Arrow would be will be a display at some point, which would be great. Which would be awesome. I'd love to actually go go to that and see that. Like, I made that. <laughs> yeah, and people will be going, "Okay, sure, just move along, move along." Like, you, you put that on wrong. <laughs> actually, I, I, did, I did laugh at that because I had um, a friend of mine who they, they have the Flash and Green Arrow costume there on display in the store. I think. And Supergirl and, as well. And Supergirl. And they did something, something, something was wrong on Green Arrow. And I pointed out to my friend. He's like, oh yeah, my friend, my friend works there. I'm like, can you tell them that, that this is on there? <laughs> like so, something's like upside down or wrong on there. And I'm just like, ah. <laughs> that, I can't say the same thing. And there was the arrow suit that was on display case. Yeah. Yeah. So some, something's wrong on there. I don't remember what it is, but I remember seeing it right away. <laughs> <laughs> Because, like, some places, um, like Warner Brothers Studios, they have that little thing. But uh, Vancouver has, like, a fantastic um, environment there, especially CW. If the sets are going to be used for another year, I mean, off-season, maybe they could, like, they can raise extra money for charities by doing tours and whatnot. I've brought that up. I've brought that up. And I, I think sometimes it's just they – not that they're not smart that they didn't think of that type of thing. Because Stargate did. Um, I just don't think it ever really occurred. Because really, especially on off-season, just that – covid list world where they had the three months when like you said that they're not being used having tours with the costumes up and then having people come in take pictures i i would have i would have paid for that and when you have flash and arrow and the rave you know the wave rider you do visits doctor who did it uh for a number of years too so it's like i'm like to me i'm like that's easy and it would allow me to go show up at the bunker with my costume on and be like look at me i'm green arrow and, <laughs> well, people would show up and cosplay for that and i think it, if they built some sort of like cw con around it it would have been very you know get the actors in do it at the end of the season type of thing before they go off on vacation and give them some extra money and they go autographs and yeah i, I should just i should just go up to warner and be like hey listen this is what you need to do i'll head it for you yep i'll take care of the work yeah no problem and guaranteed to get 
get a lot of it. It'll increase tourism there. Well, in Toronto, totally it'd be full. I mean, because Stargate, Stargate did very well for having people come in and take pictures inside Atlantis and in the Stargate uh, room in in for the show. Uh, people took have tons of pictures and did the big tour, and they they did a, creation did that, and they went super well. So. I've always been. I've always said that. I've, I've, I've said it to pretty much anyone I could get my my ear on. Like, this is what they should do. Karen will help with that. So you gotta, you know, someone to help you with this. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> there just should be. I, 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 knows, I totally agree. There's I think so many Karen knows more about Arrow than you know the the writers. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I'm enabling her. I think she's got a problem. You know, she's obsessed with Arrow, but. I enable her. It's my fault as well. Oh, here, look. Here's an Arrow Funko Pop. You know, happy birthday or Merry Christmas. Here's some more Arrow merch. I'm looking forward to seeing more merch with the work I've worked on. I'll tell you that for sure. I have a statue over there of the season four Flash, which I worked on. Uh, that's cool. It's like, I made this part. <laughs> well, which part? Did you, oh, Dan Ortiz. Hey, Justin, you made a green Arrow quiver for me years ago. Just wanted to say you did an amazing job. And I've gotten lots of compliments on it. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, that was something I did for a number of years was make quivers for for uh, season one Arrow, especially. It was a lot of fun to do. Oh, oh do you? I um, did. We'll, we'll talk, okay? <laughs> Sounds good. But no, it's, I, that's one of my more, more popular things I've ever had to run for. I don't do a lot of like costume runs where people are like, oh, I'm going to make this item and make 30 of them. I, I've always been... You know, I don't take a lot of commissions, but that one I that was a lot of fun. I did that back in Ontario, and yeah, always had fun making those ones. Those ones, so you made a few of those, yeah. Yeah, I made uh, maybe fifteen or so in total. Holy maybe, crap! Yeah, quite quite a few. And it's something that it's not like I ever I never make quivers for the TV show at all. So it's something that I'm always like, ah, oh, I can always you know make a few more or whatever because my leather work has gotten a thousand times better. So. Yeah, so did you uh would you ever think of coming down to Ontario if someone invited you to one of their cons? Oh yeah, I totally do that. I've been I've been wanting to come back and visit. I've not been back there since since I left, so I would totally I would totally do that. Um I I've I've been eyeing the I don't know if you ever went to them, but there's always the the prop clubs or prop clubs um expo. So they had like what they call it? I think they call it the Toronto Prop Expo or something like that. I've been to it once. It's yeah, pretty cool. So I, I loved doing that when when I was there. So I was like, oh, I'd love to come down. And now that I now that I've worked in it, talk about your quivers. How about a boxing glove arrow? I have always wanted to do that, regardless of which arrow I'm wearing. <laughs> <But> <laughs> it's it's you know if you make a pad with no point, you have a con safe arrow. <laughs> well, it depends, right? I mean, how, how far you pull back? It depends on what what you have to pull back, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I like to see that in action. But they did—they did do a boxing glove arrow though on the on arrow, very briefly. One shot. He stabs a, bo a real boxing glove and shoots it at a at a guy. And cheered. And uh, Jamie is asking, "What is the hottest costume to wear? What is the hottest hottest costume to wear that you made?" I made for myself. Yeah, probably, probably my Mando. It's got several layers and armor. Anakin was always pretty warm. These you, people automatically think, oh, the leather costumes are so hot, but they're not. There's um, a lot of breathability to leather and it's not 100% encased in leather. There's, there's there's stretch panels underneath and stuff. Um, but no, the Mando is probably the hottest. It's got a helmet too. I find if you wear a costume that you cover up everything, like your hands, your feet, and your head, you're gonna be more warm. With Green Arrow, you can take the hood off. <laughs> But the Mandalorian, you have the big helmet on, right? So it's, you're completely encased. Right. Um, now, now, the actors, when they get in, inside their costumes, is that similar to that uh, Friends episode where Ross, you know, got stuck in his costume and had to put, like, baby powder on? And, so, some, or... Sometimes, I guess. It depends on uh, – we try and make them so that they're super easy to get in and out of. But people sweat a lot. And sometimes you can't get around to, to peel out of it. I'm sure at the end of the day when – Grant is done being the flash today. I'm sure he's very thankful to be out. <laughs> no doubt. Probably helps him stay thin as well. Probably. <laughs> he worked out all the any carbs he'd have, yeah. 
they they uh, the actors who wear these costumes they're they're definitely real heroes in that regard it's it's not it's not as easy as people would think uh you know like one thing i, I was talking about uh, wearing something in and uh they wear their costumes when they wear like it's especially during crisis. I mean, they're, they're in those, you know, 12 to 15 hours a day for like two weeks straight. And you're in that costume, you know, <laughs> it's going to wear very different than if you wear your cosplay for one day on a weekend, three times a year, you know? So <laughs> they, they, they put a lot of work into that and they, they, they do pretty good considering. <laughs> I can't imagine like the ones that wear the masks and the helmets and stuff. All of them, uh, Ben Affleck included. I knew Christian Bale complained, complained about it because it gets kind of, you know, you're covered. <laughs> or Carl Urban when he played Judge Dredd. Him and he had that helmet on the entire time. Never came off during any shots. Yeah, yeah. Well, after shots, but you know, during yeah. the whole long movie. But you feel it, I'm sure. <laughs> oh wow. I can just imagine uh, going around with prosthetics as well. That could be a pain. Yeah, I mean, you look at that, right? So, I mean, I think that's probably why Martian Manhunter is CG'd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But, uh, wow. Anything Anything you've been up to since this um, COVID-19 happened? Uh, I've used this time to catch up on projects that I put off and put off and put off. <laughs> so I completed some video games that I kept putting off. But I also worked on my phaser that I've had for a few years. Uh, my proton pack is at a place where it just needs electronics now and a few pieces I am casting up. And that, that's a six year long project. Six years of having all the parts and then finally having the time to put it all together. Um, but yeah, that's pretty in my Mandalorian that I worked on. That's all been done through COVID. This working on this new arrow costume. Um, yeah, I just pretty much catching up on myself. That's what I use COVID, uh, this COVID time to do, which has been really nice. It's been really nice to, to do that and and figure things out and learn new new techniques and goof around and <laughs> pretend to shoot arrows. Okay, the Grimazing Reed asks, does Justin, that's you, uh, have a favorite costume he has not made yet? <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess Superman would be one. I mentioned it earlier. That's, that's I have the fabric. Um, that's, and I have the boots that I had custom made. So I have, you know, a few things there. And, and I mentioned that I'm, the Witcher is one that I'm really looking forward to making. So Ooh. the Henry Cavill version. So of course. that's the only one we remember right now. <laughs> uh, Paul is back. Uh, you need to work on some more Doctor Who stuff. I'll always remember you as the 10th Doctor. I'll always be the 10th Doctor. I, uh, the last three years I've gone to Gallifrey one in Los Angeles, which is a Doctor Who only convention. And uh, last year, I pre-ordered a new sonic screwdriver from the guy who makes them for the show. So, wow, <laughs> be more Doctor Who stuff. Always more Doctor Who stuff. <laughs> uh, Grammys, uh, he came in late. So joining in late, super cool stuff. Steve and Justin. Uh, Grammazing Reed, just to let you know, he was a magician I had on my show, oh. and he was like fantastic. He actually did virtual magic between the sets. I mean. I pretended to pick a card and I knew what it was and he just kind of picked it out from his side. It was just amazing. Magicians Magic. are all amazing. <laughs> right? I know. Favorite acts on, on uh, America's Got Talent. Chris Borges, uh, I have a few Batman suits. They're sweat factories. Yes. Yes. From what I hear, all of them are, no matter what. Even the one we made. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie uh, Paget. I have a full predator suit, very yeah. hot. They're also that's a lot of what you were saying too, Steve. Is the um, the prosthetic stuff, and that's predator is very prosthetic heavy. So that's yeah, they get very very warm. Um, you in Ontario, you've met Rhonda, yeah? She does the pred. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've never met her in person, but I've talked to her a lot. She does the predator, and she does alien, and she does Michelangelo, and yeah. She has them all. Uh, but obviously, she's always got a freaking sweatband on underneath when she takes off the costume. I mean, it's always wet. It's always soaked in there. It's always warm. But you know what? You want to look awesome, you got you to gotta get warm. And she is awesome. What is the most complicated part of the Nando build? <sighs> complicated part? All the damn sanding. <laughs> <laughs> what part are you sanding? The helmet and my shoulders are 3D printed. And then I also 3D printed the big rifle. So 
uh, printing them, obviously not a big deal. Uh, I was, I'm, I'm very blessed with the fact that my company has a 3d scanner. So I have a 3d scan of my head. Uh, so I was able to fit the helmet perfectly. And then we printed it, which is time, right? You make sure the printer's working great. And then it's like, you know, 80 hours later, you have your helmet and it's just sanding it to try and make it not look like it's printed. 3d prints, um, have you know, that kind of like layered look as it builds it up. So it's kind of like rippled and you want to make that not look like it's that. So that's probably the most complicated part. The, uh, the actual armor is a material called Sintra. So you get that cut out and then you like heat, heat gun it or boil it and then you form it to whatever shape to your body. Um, so really, and then, I mean, I sewed the vest for that and then it had my, did some 3D modeling. I did all the leather work on it. So that stuff wasn't, I wouldn't say complicated. We did do rubber knees. That was fun. But we printed that, sanded that, and then cast it. That was my all oh, my girlfriend. So, yeah, complicated. I'd say the sanding, the helmet, because that's the, the, and and also the helmet's kind of the one thing everyone looks at. So that's got to you got to bang that, like you got to get that dead on, so that people are like. <laughs> but if you want to see more of that, it's definitely it's on my it's on my Instagram. So you can't be hey, Instagram. Scrolling across the bottom, everybody. <laughs> Hey, what is a uh, Prime Roto Twitter account? <laughs> yeah, what so Prime Roto was my my user name on everything for the longest while, and that is um, when I was in high school. I started to write a book, which I should really get back to. Um, and I created I needed to create a wizard name, and I didn't want like standard name, so I just made up the name Prime Roto, and I used it for everything because it doesn't exist. So it's my email, it's my it was everything. But now I've been gravitating towards this Justin online and try to be a little bit more professional. Now that I'm almost 40, you know, I kind of need to, you know, <laughs> get away from the hotmail. But Twitter is the only one that uh, didn't have enough characters for it. And this Justin is taken everywhere because for obvious reasons. Wow. Yeah. Um, Justin, yeah. This Justin. One of the wrestlers, like Justin Sane or Justin Credible. And exactly. So Justin is a great name. It is. It, apparently, everyone loves it. That's why everything else is this Justin online, including the YouTube channel. But Twitter, I've kept it promoto. I may try and find a way to change it, but I didn't want to do like Justin on. I think it was like Justin on Lie or on Lin. Like, that's not working. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. Oh wow! Um, uh, anything you're looking forward to working on once things get back? Yeah, like we have we have two two or three major projects that for two different productions and Netflix and uh, and the CW that we're looking at that we know we'll have to do. So I'm looking forward to looking at those and seeing how we can tackle some new problems, uh, problem solving to try and make things really great. And that's that's I'm looking forward to that. Uh, you know, the, all the series got cut off, so I'm looking forward to seeing if they pick up that stuff. We did a lot of work for the Flash for the finale that kind of. Had, had to kind of be halt, halted so with mirror mistress so and that was a fun caution to work on and she got seen in the final episode which i still haven't seen yet um oh yeah i know i gotta catch up on it <laughs> before we go back to work um but uh but no i'm looking forward to it like the one thing that we do in our work is problem solve and it's interesting coming from a different perspective from everyone that's there and my perspective is always um uh, appreciate it because I come at it from a fan nerd point of view and so we to kind of make things fun and and and, and problem solve how so they can work and then of course you also have to figure out how it's going to fit how it's going to attach how it's going to so it's always it's always fun that way yeah and um so the 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 coolest thing is you start out in Toronto doing your just you know this just in and then you suddenly made the move and you moved all the way to Vancouver. How did this happen? It was, it was interesting because, so I, my, my background is graphic designer. So I was just doing, right. working at a sign shop and, and print shop. And I started doing my YouTube channel because I really wanted to get all this out. I wanted to talk about this stuff. And then I wanted to talk to people that never get seen a lot. I find a lot of behind the scenes documentaries, um, not everyone gets talked to you hear from the lead designers and stuff like that. And that's fine. And they're, they're great. And they're the people you should talk to, but sometimes those little guys you want to hear from what makes them special, what make what makes them where people keep going to. So I arranged to come out to Vancouver to interview and I interviewed uh, Aaron Harrison, who uh, did a lot of the quivers for, for arrow and amongst 
tons of other work. He does a lot of leather work, like hard, hard leather work and stuff. And I interviewed Ocean Drive Leather, who did a lot of soft garment stuff. I interviewed the archery technician and I just wanted to come and kind of talk to these people that you don't really hear from a lot. And then after coming here, I, you know, I talked with the Ocean Drive Leather guys quite a bit and they, they really liked my enthusiasm and, and my, my geek know-how and, and what I knew, but also the fact that I have a, had an eye for detail. And I, I took them, I took them my current green arrow caution at the time. And it was like, this is a ripoff of your work, but here it is. And they're like, wow, you got all these details. How'd you know this was there? It's covered. And I'm like, well, just, I just assumed it had to be there and stuff like that, that they, uh, after, so that was in April. So then April, May, June, around in June, they said, Hey, we've been thinking about getting into laser textures using a laser laser. Have you ever done that? So I said, Oh, I've done plastics and stuff and they wanted to know if i'd done leather and i said not exclusively but i can sure it can be done so i went and to my local laser guy we did a batman logo and they're like that's that's amazing like had three levels of texture and they're like wow would you be willing to do that for us from there and i was going to do design work in ontario and send it back up here from the laser cut and then they're like we need to cut the middleman out would you like to move to vancouver and work with us and i was like uh work on like superhero costumes for a living yeah let me check so i checked with my, like my my wife at the time and i checked with my daughter and i said so this is the thing will it be a big move but i'll get to work on the flash and supergirl and who knows what else and we decided to make the move and that's and then came out here and like like i mentioned earlier my my ex worked on arrow so she's actually working on film sets and stuff <laughs> You know, wow. so, and she worked on Riverdale Dale, and stuff like that. So it's like, that's great, like for, for her career. And then I make work on costumes. <laughs> that's amazing. It's like every geek boy's dream. You're living it right now. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty amazing. I'm definitely thankful for it. I'm not, uh, even, even on the hard days, there's always a, a, a day that comes around that makes you go, wow, that was amazing. <laughs> And I can't believe I made that, you know, that's all oh, that's iconic, you know, or the actor was super stoked and excited and they let you know that, or you have Jennifer Connelly come in and you have to do a 3d scan of her head. Like, <laughs> so it's like, you get days like that. <laughs> uh, tell, tell us a funny story. Um, nothing that's going to really embarrass anyone, but you know, like something odd that uh, happened during like filming or creating costumes or whatnot. Oh, geez. That's, there's always funny stuff. Which I think would be a good, good one to tell. I, I know that um, one of the funnier ones for me was uh, with with, um, with Tom coming in to do Pariah. He's a Ta Tom Cavanaugh. He's a very he's a silly man, <laughs> and his Pariah costume uh, is basically two pieces when you take all the armor off and the cape, and it's a crop top and and. Uh, up to here green pants with with uh with suspenders so they look like fishing waders <laughs> and they sure to milk that out <laughs> he walked out with his thumbs in and talking about going <laughs> fishing and <laughs> so like yeah actually what one one thing i liked about him is uh, we were all standing around and one thing I don't know if you've ever been to a, a fitting yourself, Steve, but you have the actor in their costume in the, in the middle of like five people easily. And we're all kind of just making sure, seeing how things are going. And they're like, you know, pulling things here, making sure that it's sitting right there and, and they're doing this. And you're kind of adjusting him. And he turned to all of us and went, do you want to know what it's like to be me? And we're like, okay. So then he went to each and every one of us and adjusted something on us. Like he's like, yeah, that looks better. Good to the next person. Oh, there, that's better. <laughs> And adjusting us. He fixed my I was wearing a hoodie and he fixed my he fixed the way my hood was laying. All right. <laughs> so it's very generous, very hilarious man. <laughs> sounds like it. Sounds like that sounds pretty cool. Well, you know, you have to stand there with all these people adding yeah. stuff, taking stuff away, sticking um tape down to see if how something's gonna sit, putting temporary velcro on, you know cutting stuff, stitching something real quick while they were waiting. <laughs> but he was really gracious. He was really fun. 
Aww. And he actually told me, he told me a piece of advice that I really liked um, about approaching anything in life, but he was mentioning about acting. And that was um, coming from a funny man. I, it was, it was surprising, but he said his perspective was changed when someone said the difference between being happy at what you're doing is using the word have to or get. So he's like, Oh, I have to put this on or I have to do this versus I get to do this. And I was like, oh, and I kind of changed my perspective a little bit too, because some days it feels like, oh, I have to build this. I have to make this. And saying, I get to, oh, I get to make the Flash costume. I get to make the Flash, the new cowl. Oh, I get to paint this. It's I get to interview Justin Monk. Exactly. It's, it's a great way of perspective. And that's what Tom Cavanaugh dropped that on me during a fitting. <laughs> I was Change trying to use that. The difference between saying you get to do something versus have to. It changes your entire demeanor about how you approach something. And that's from a veteran. Yeah. I was like, that's that's amazing. I'll, I'll never forget those, those words from him. I know it's not as a funny story, but it's a really powerful way of language. Yeah, it is. Um, and Karen says, great advice. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Hey, you know, sometimes uh, you, you get stuck on these guys who have, you know, you you kind of forget that they that they got to go through all this stuff. And he's been he's been acting forever. I've seen lots of his stuff. I mean, he was in Yogi Bear. <laughs> hey, look, I get to get rid of her comment. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna die. <laughs> yeah, that's that's awkward now. <laughs> But no, this, there's always funny stuff. There's always funny stories. There's always, um, you know, slipping. Like when I when we did John Ship, I uh, I had to put I had to put his ears on for the first time, and so the the yeah. earbuds, and uh, I was like, I had to do it. So I had to like crouch down, do this to him like this, and then I like looked him on the eye, and I was like, I'm fanboying so hard right now. <laughs> I mean, I said it out loud because that's just who I am. <laughs> you said it out loud. Yeah. He thought it was great. And looked down at you going, yeah, you are. Just just, just back. No, no, he was great. He said he, after he had them in, he started doing lines from the show. And he wow. asked me, like, what episodes I liked and what, what characters were my favorite. And so I told him about the blue flash. And then he's talking. So I started doing lines from that that he remembered. No, he was John Wesley Shipp, probably one of my favorite people I've ever met in this job. 100%. And then, of course, and he he actually uh, one of the he he posted about us on his Instagram. He, he posted the group shot with us, thanking us for the suit and Kate. And so, like, yeah, super awesome guy. If you get a chance to meet him at a convention. Highly recommend it. I did. I, I met him twice. First at uh, Motor City Comic Con, and okay. then I got one of the um, I got the old Flash costume from his original series. Yeah. Never knowing that he would actually have that costume again in the new Arrowverse. And then later I saw him in, yeah, right? I mean, I'm, I'm glad I got it now. And then I also got another one when he was at uh, Toronto of, uh, hmm. you know, the new Golden Age Flash. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping, I can't wait to see him again at the convention. That, that'll be fun to be out of, out of the, uh, that method. Because that's the one fun, fun thing about me, too, is I, when I do get to see them at conventions now, they usually remember who I am, which is... <laughs> Geek cred. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to cut in front of the line going, yeah, hey, man. No, I no, I stand in line. I stand in line. I did that with McCad because uh, we worked on his Guardian costume. And we waited we in line. And when it said hi to him and just because he was he was a really good Jimmy Olsen. And I, I really liked him. And he remembered me, which was cool. <laughs> I like it when they remember me. It's good. <laughs> yeah, you stand there in line go, hey. I had I had nipples to his costume. Yeah. No, you you stand in line and you say nothing. Then you get up there and all of a sudden they know who you are and everyone in line's going, "Who, who is this random dude? <laughs> is he famous? Green Arrow costume? Who is this guy?" <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, we can't wait to um, have you come down here again when everything opens up. And yeah. Karen, at the same time, she says, "Can't wait for conventions to start again." Yeah, yeah me too. I now have like three costumes. I got my new Ghostbuster. I got the new Green Arrow. I got Mandalorian. I, I got to show these things off. How am I supposed to do that? <laughs> Say, if if you guys have another show in Vancouver and you got some like people from the Arrowverse, um, I'm going to recommend you hiring a um a handler. Karen would be a good handler. She'll just oh, like go and 
I thought for a second you were going to say, maybe if they need a bald doctor, just let them let me know. Well, sure, sure, that too, you know. All bad guys are bald. You know, I can do it. Except CW, everyone looks good and has hair and shit. And I'm not thrilled with that, man. Well, people like me out of a job. Luther just has a beard. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it works still, right? It, it's, it's a new uh, interpretation of Luthor, which um, we never oh, no, thought of. Fantastic. I, you know, I can't wait to see how he goes further in the Arrowverse. So, because everyone didn't think he was going to be good. I think he was fantastic. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, his latest encounter with Miss Teschmacher. I mean, he's all being really nice. And we're like, hey, he's actually a pretty good guy until freaking the truth comes out. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, and he told me for me in the scene on uh, I think it was Supergirl, where he was he had, it was a flashback to when he made the skies red for Red Sun, and he had this whole thing about how he's not a man, and went on this whole tirade about Superman. And I was like, oh man, this is way better than Three and a Half Men. <laughs> so <laughs> no, like, I got I was I was really pleased with with him, and then you know what I, you know that happens all the time, right? a comedian gets a it's a serious role of a superhero people automatically think this isn't gonna be good freaking michael keaton as batman ha huh? and right then he's great and you know same thing with all the way down and then to him you know all they didn't think he was gonna be good at at being lex luthor and he was great so they know what they're doing you can't really follow well, I, I figure as a comedian right you can you've actually seen the funny side of things you kind of know how to play things serious hmm. and you can flip it yeah yeah, for yeah. sure. It's a sign of a talented actor. And CW has had a really great track record of getting some really good performances and actors. And they get some um, classic or older actors that have been around for a while. And they get some new people and they can kind of mix it up. And it usually goes over really well. I mean, Phil no Lamar. One, Smallville, right? It was the same thing. John Schneider. Never thought yep. he'd be in Paw Kent, but he was fantastic. So. Oh, Jonathan Kent. I'm yeah. going to correct you on that because when I interviewed him, I called him Paw Kent and he made fun of me. He goes, I'm Jonathan Kent. <laughs> and he made sure it was it Jonathan. True. It is true that he is Jonathan Kent. <laughs> uh, Phil Lamar, that's another one. He's a comedian. Um, also does the voice of Green uh, Lantern. He played John John's brother, and yep. he played it serious. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you can. Sometimes it's the best way to do it, and of course, they're usually the most funny offset, right? So oh, yeah. uh, Michael Rosenbaum, fa famously a goofball on set, <laughs> plays Lex Luthor as the diabolical man um was the other one would be did you ever see legend season one? Oh yeah so casper who played uh who played vental savage was apparently the nicest guy you'll ever meet <laughs> and yet he's diabolical oh i get that a lot in locker rooms at wrestling shows uh yeah. some of the, some of the people that scare the hell out of me in the ring get in the locker room there's some of the nicest people around that's usually the way it works <laughs> yeah it's fun being bad <laughs> or pretending to be bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, any advice you want to give to anybody who wants to get into the, um, the film industry as yeah. you are? Film industry is interesting because there's so many ways to get into it. Um, independent contractors are a big part of a film. I mean, I mentioned Aaron Harrison earlier uh, who does Quivers. He's an independent contractor, right? So he's not in a union or working at a costume shop costume shop on set he, they come to him and same with ocean drive they come to us and um but you can also go into it by you know going to the film industry by joining iatsi going through all the training courses to be whatever direction you want to go props costume on set da's all that stuff and you can get in that way so and if you get in that way eventually you work your way through and find where you want to go uh, if you're lucky enough to find someone who's hiring that's a contractor obviously a great way of getting into it and sometimes it's just a matter of finding out who makes things um in toronto i know that lj supersuits makes a lot of the titan stuff and i'm not sure if she's located in toronto or not but she does like star girl and a bunch of others and uh, she made nightwing's new costume for titans and stuff like that so um you find out where they are and you can submit a resume so for me my resume was hey i'm here doing an interview <laughs> Here's my enthusiasm. Here's my credentials. My my bosses love uh, hiring cosplayers. So they're they're technically at one point there was four of us, four or five of us there that had a cosplay background or as costuming as I like to call it. Um, but my girlfriend works there now too, and she does casting and molding. And her like you know, and 
it's she's absolutely fantastic what she does but having the background of costume making on a deadline for your uh, on a budget and all that kind of stuff helps um kind of help your background so if you're into that already getting into somewhere like that you do have a leg up for sure because you you're kind of familiar um and obviously always having the willingness to to, to push yourself right so that's you get finding it's hard when someone says how do you just get into the film industry because there's just so many different ways you can just get right in i'm not i'm not unionized i'm not part of iatsi you know um but in, and and you know on the other side of that my my ex-wife she is right so she went through all that process and and had to get a gun license so that she has props on set with guns she's fully licensed by the rcmp and stuff like that so there's things you have to do whichever way you go so it depends on which what, what do you what what do you want to do in the film industry do you want to learn how to sew costumes do you want to make a cool prop do you want to all the all depending on where you want to go but starting off looking at your local chapters for iatsi and your local contractors is by far the best way to kind of look through i'm gonna ask about your ex-wife um did she started in the movie industry when she moved to vancouver or was she already in it in toronto no no in vancouver she was looking for something to do while i was working and holy crap so that's freaking amazing and then she ended up on arrow Yep, yeah, and 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 uh, a Netflix. She just a Netflix show and a couple other CW shows, and she's quite well known now. And so it's it's great. Yeah. Wow, I'm blown away. That's just amazing. It's it's you know it's an industry that's always looking for dedicated, trustworthy, dependable people. And the more you you prove that, the more, I mean, the the better of a career you have. You know, always. <laughs> Because I, I started a while ago, like um, about in the nine or early two thousands, I was like, um, I, I was doing extra work for you know for a while, and I, was, I wanted to kind of get into directing and whatnot. And I started being a PA and stuff, and I realized, you know what, extras got treated better than we did. So I went back <laughs> to doing that stuff. It was more fun. It's all. It's all. That is one thing I want to do at some point here, which I want to do before too long, is do do be an extra in some show somewhere where I can be like, there I am. CW, you got the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I fit in most of the costumes. I should just, you know, just show up on set. Right. And look at you. Yeah, you, you could you could have been um, the body double for um, yeah. standing. <laughs> Steve uh, and I are both the same It's all good. Same build. <laughs> yeah, you know, when um, when I first started going to Comic-Cons and I saw that most of these cosplayers and people like you that created props, I mean, you guys are amazing. Why aren't you in the film industry? And now you've actually proven that yep. it, it works. That's my own, little, my own little secret thing when I, because I read the Reddit threads and they're like, oh man, they should have really had a cos, cosplayer give their opinion on this. And I'm like, I did. I was there. That's why it looks this way. What are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. They don't realize it, but it's fun because I go on and I, I see things. I'm like, <laughs> 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 we were out there. We're, the, the, people that do cosplay and costuming and have a have a desire and a passion for it do work in the industry and we do have our hands in the costumes it's great so <laughs> that's good to know i like it i like i like being able to be able to say that that, that i've and i hope i hope i mean i don't know i can't quantify be like yeah if it wasn't for me the costumes would look but you know i hope i've made a difference just my giving my opinion here and there on costumes that have hopefully made them better. That's my, that's my hope <laughs> that just my mere, my mere presence and my opinions and my passion has somehow uh, helped costumes and, and made them look that little bit extra special. Well, sometimes fans really help because um, Karen was on a set when they did, um, oh geez, uh, Nick Fury with the Hoff. Yeah. yeah. And she witnessed, you know, um, they had the eye patch on the wrong eye and that they didn't know what was going on until a comic book fan you know, pulled out his like graphic novel of Nick Fury and like, oh, we got to change this. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what we're there for. <laughs> and I'm well known. I'm well known in all the circles as a big fanboy. So they, they all know me as that. All the production teams. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So I'm gonna ha I gotta hang out with you being your fanboy fanning on you. It's like, oh my god, you were done it, bro. No, not really. 
just thought I'd do that, you know. Just, it's good. Uh, you can you get your shirt that says this Justin number one fan. It's all good. Justin number one fan, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we'll do that and then I'll follow you around be your handler. Perfect. Like, back off, man. Oh wait, oh wait, yep, stand. You have to have Just a coil. Coming. You need a coil. Right, I will. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sorry, sir. Sorry, can't talk, Justin. Okay. Just two minutes. Yep. Okay. So you yeah. go. So, so you, you you get me a place somewhere at an Ontario convention that invites me as a guest, and then you can be my you be my handler. It's all good. We're good. We're set. We got this. Look at me. I look evil. Yes, like a doctor of evil. <laughs> yeah, I know you got me to do that again. Really, it's not so evil. Uh, thanks a lot, Justin. This was really great. Um, I, I've learned a lot more, and uh, hopefully, people watch and will be inspired. Yeah, hope so too. That's I, if there's anything I could ever do is inspiring people to pursue dreams or to do something more. It's anytime I've ever heard that from people who have, who have told me for different reasons, like, Oh, seeing you do this inspired me to do this. That's always the biggest compliment anyone can ever give. And uh, before we go, thanks Justin and Steve, great stories and information. You're welcome. You, everyone. And everyone else. That's right. I'm not sure if she's really enjoying the interview or just enjoying the fact that I've got the arrow cave behind me and you've got a costume of arrow back there. Cause she's just, like, one, you know, just one continuous backdrop. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I, I got real Steve Amell, you know, tied up back there. Exactly. With the car. Right. With the arrow car. Right. <laughs> yes. The, I mean, arrow cave. Aeromobile. And the, his, his, he has an arrow plane in the comics too. Don't forget. Yes, he does. <laughs> yeah. An arrow play. <laughs> in the arrow cave. Yeah, he did. It's a looks like an arrow. Oh, that's why my, one of my favorite comic bits is have you ever had a have you ever had a unique idea in your life? <laughs> There's a get across to London Comic Con and he's talking about UK London. Oh yeah. yeah. The I doc would, would like to go there, Jamie. Hook me up. Okay. I'd love to go to London. I've always as a big Doctor Who fan, I've always wanted to go to the UK and I have not. No, seriously, Jamie, hook me up, man. The doctor will go. They'll tell the Belgians I'll be there. They'll be all around me. They're my peeps. Yeah. Bruges. <laughs> and Chris says, uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Justin has inspired me to be a better cosplayer. Thank you, my friend. Oh, thank you, Chris. Chris was one of the guys who I would often, when I'd be selling off a upgraded piece, I'd be like, oh, I'm upgrading this leather jacket. I need to sell this other leather jacket. And he's like, I'll take it. So he's got a lot of my hand-me-down Stargate costumes and other things. Yeah, and then when I found, when Chris found out that I was an extra on Stargate, he's like, ah, <laughs> yeah. my claim to fame. Not really. I, I was like one of those extras. Is like, um, okay, we need people for the front. Um, you, you, out of the way. You, you. So I'm like, oh man, I'm not pretty enough. But then there's a scene where everyone turns into killer zombie. Like they're not zombies but like they're being controlled and they're supposed to be mean okay we need some scary people up front you yes it's great to be ugly ah which episode was that that was um is it the earlier the, zombie one or uh, it, it's actually a popular one uh oh fuck i forget the name of it it's where everyone's got those little links on their head yeah and and the community keeps getting smaller yes. and smaller yes. yeah you're one of the scary people who chase them yeah you know when, when we start chasing them through that little the end where the portal was yeah and we're gonna beat the hell out of them i had hair though but uh i was there i'll, I'll have to I'll have to pull that dvd up and we'll have to watch it i saw her i watched that episode with her so with with my girlfriend elena so <laughs> i remember that one it's one of my favorite ones actually. it's a good it's a good episode and there was another one where i came back from afghanistan and i mm -hmm. just I still, I was still with my agent, so I got to be an extra again, and they put me in a military uniform, and I got to be in a scene with Robert Picardo, and with these cockroaches coming out of a coffin, and we just looked oh. at it and ran away. That was it. Scourge? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Just one scene. You know, you never see me before. Who knows what happened to me? You went off to uh, Atlantis, and that's where you stayed. Right. If they keep yeah. trying to reboot this, they, they keep trying to bring back the show. You just gotta get your name back in there and be like, hey, remember me? I was in these episodes. I'm an established character. <laughs> yeah, see, here's the picture. That's, that's me poking my head out behind the lead actress. <laughs> oh, we thought that was just a mole. We had to delete that part. Oh, thanks, jerk. 
<laughs> Anyways, uh, once again, thanks again. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for this. This was fun. Yeah, it sure was. And I don't have anything else lined up this week, but next week, who knows? We're going to have some people on again. Awesome. Look All forward right. to seeing who else you have on. For sure. Ending broadcast now. <laughs>